we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it! We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in! Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Good morning. I'm so glad to be with you today and to lift up the name of the Lord together and to be able to know that the Lord is speaking and moving in our midst. I really and truly believe that we must be up and about the Father's business more so than ever before. And we have to find the steps as best we can to continue to press into those areas of, of all the different areas of influence or opportunity that that affords us and uh, that that we don't take that lightly and we try and we don't abuse it uh, for the Lord, you know, and try to manipulate in areas. But at the same time. There's times when we feel and ones in life that, you know, I'm doing all of these different things in my life. But I feel like that I'm just unusable. I feel like that uh, it's all reached a place that seems to be worthless. Um, and perhaps for some, it's gotten to an extreme crisis in their lives. And others, perhaps you don't even look at it as being something in a sense of worthlessness uh, in, in those type places. But whether you're in a crisis or whether you're just going through a routine of just feeling like it's become so ritual, so repetitive, and uh, that it's just lost for having a sense of urgency of, again, being up and about the Father's business. I direct our attention this morning to the word of the Lord and I want to speak on because I just keep having my heart pulled in this way. I know it's again a familiar place I guess we could call it in the word of the Lord or a story that is familiar to many especially those in a uh, biblical uh, study or in ones that are just uh, church in attendance and hearing messages and hearing the gospel or the Christian songs that brings about certain messages of scripture from the word of the Lord. Here, uh, I'd like to turn our attention quickly to uh, two individuals that intertwined their lives uh, was not expected to meet this way. It wasn't planned. It wasn't like friendships. In fact, it seemed to be more on the extreme opposite end of enemies, if you please. But at the same time, there's ones that come into our life or situations come into our life in ways that we just really don't think about at times that would have ever happened. And sometimes it's in an, in an unexpected extreme situation like this developed in um, but what stands out to me is that I want to start sort of at the back of the story and then move to the front end of it and then bring us back to generally this area if I can in in this location that I start at for these next few moments together I want to direct our attention in the word of the Lord to really in Acts the ninth chapter. And I want to start with verse 10 
uh, in Acts chapter 9. Uh, we, we hear the conversion or the encounter that Saul, as we know him from the New Testament of Apostle Paul, um, we want to start to where his life is n not at the point really where he's serving God uh, in the sense of knowing Jesus as Lord. But at the same time, God has a place and a plan for him and the transformation is taking effect at that moment because of an encounter. Um, and here, God speaks to really a third party, if you please. There's a young man that I will highlight in a moment that really became connected into Saul's life. And uh, that really, it seemed like to energize Saul uh, in the journey that he had began uh, to work that he felt like was for God. But it was to get and to eliminate the Christian community. That was Saul's desire. That was his journey. No doubt, I guess you could almost f feel like you could use it in the sense that he felt like that was his calling in life for that moment. And so I wonder if we get to places in our life that we feel like maybe this is our calling in our life. But then we have this encounter with Jesus Christ. And it brings in a transformation. But that transformation brings in changes that we thought we already had our life lined up. We have involved decisions and choices that is shaping our life, our career, our different areas. But then when we have an encounter with Jesus, we realize that career and those choices, they don't line up with God's word that would be pleasing to him. So now it brings in a whole different dynamic. And I know the Lord is speaking this into somebody's heart that's going to hear this because this encounter that the Lord is calling you through him with is going to have to transform and it's going to continually re redesign, uh, you know, your entire career choice and and the, the things that you have involved your life with. It may be those that you have involved your life with that you thought you was going to make the rest of your life with. And this is where it gets really challenging now because when you encounter the Lord and you realize, wait a minute, a lot of these choices that I've made in my life, they're going to have to change. They're going to have to realign, you know, and it's going to not be an easy journey. And, and uh, when you start making those, all of a sudden you realize that a lot of those things that seem to be solid foundational things you have put in your life in order to align what will please the Lord. But let me tell you something. When you start aligning things that's going to please him, it may start looking like it's going to become a very devastating situations. But at the same time, as you are lining it up with the Lord, his faithfulness is going to bring that place and there's going to somehow work you through all of those transitions into a place of wholeness, completeness. And you're going to find his strength during those times of challenge. For instance, and now that brings me to this message. I had to just sort of bring in line a little bit because look at Saul's life. Here is a... Uh, you know, a certain disciple by the name of Ananias, the Lord comes and calls on Ananias. But there's a reason when Ananias hears his name, he says in Acts 9, verse 10, he says, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go to the street called Straight, inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarshish. That's who we're talking about. In this message today. Saul of Tarshish. But then it says behold he is praying. Isn't that interesting? Now in the book of James of the New Testament. It speaks about where you can. 
where, where you know, you can ask a misc and the Lord does not answer those prayers. So the things that Saul was doing before that seemed to be spiritual, the Lord was not hearing, but now he's hearing because the Lord says to Ananias, he is praying. And in a vision, Saul has seen a man named Ananias coming in, putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Saul had had an encounter on a road when he had left from Jerusalem going to Damascus. And during this encounter, when the Lord was speaking to him, you'd have to back up at the beginning of this chapter to encounter that moment. It says that when the Lord was speaking to him, that he lost his physical eyesight during that time. And even the ones around that was with Saul heard a voice, but they saw no one. And they became very afraid. But now when this encounter and, and the, the speaking with the Lord had concluded with him on his way now to this location. It said he had physical sight uh, that was removed. And um, the Lord is speaking to Ananias. And Ananias, after hearing what the Lord told him to do, said these words. Look at this. Verse 13, Acts 9. Lord, I have heard from many about this man. How much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. You know, we're in a day where there's legal situations that's beginning to come that can even challenge your relationship with the Lord. And so here it was in the same avenue for Ananias. Ananias is saying he's come here with legal authority to bind me and ones like me that call on your name. Verse 15, Acts 9. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. It wasn't that the Lord was going to get even with him, but he was going to see what he was beginning to put other children of the Lord through. He himself was going to be going through it as well but what he was going to find was not the suffering that seemed to overtake everything it was actually being able to know what the Lord was going to be there with him through his faithfulness of his commitment to the Lord uh, and now we see this lining up so for the sake of time Ananias went to this location he walks in, there is Saul without sight. He prays for him and he says to him as he begins to uh, put his hands on him in verse 17 of Acts. He says, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Now, let me keep reading because I want you to see what happens even as ones begin to give their life. Saul had a reputation. Saul was known for what he was coming to do against the people of the Lord. But it says there was such a transformation from this encounter that all to, that's what's going to show the difference in our lives. If we have that encounter with the Lord, there's going to be immediate change. In other words, we're going to know, wait a minute, the things in my life that were not lining up with the Lord, they're going to line up now. I've got to make immediate change. I've got to go into some things. I've got to step into areas. I've got to start a process. This thing's begun because it says in the very next 
verse 20. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Now I'm sure that because the reputation that was preceded, that, that, that was, you know, that was coming before Saul when he came into the areas and now who he was known by many to be as, even though he had had this encounter, there's a lot when they would see him, they didn't know he had changed. But it said in verse 21, then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not he who destroyed those? who called on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for the purpose so that he might bring them bound to the chief priests. In other words, is he just trying to deceive us? That's the reason why we need the Spirit of the Lord to help us to search out things. I'm telling you, this is deep this morning. God's really wanting to speak some things into our life to use the unusable. That's the title that I feel the Lord is touching my heart with today. To use the unusable. It said, but Paul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proven that Jesus is the Christ. But look what immediately continued to follow because he started an immediate transformation an immediate change an immediate alignment of getting things lined up that would be pleasing to the Lord so verse 23 of Acts 9 and after many days were passed the Jews plotted to kill him but their plot became known to Saul I'm here to tell you Satan's not going to lay down long at all when you make a commitment to Jesus Christ and you start getting things lined up in your life that's going to be pleasing and serving him, don't worry, the enemy is going to be coming after you with everything he has in hopes that he's going to be able not just douse your fire or cool you down, he wants to completely crush you. That's his job. But aren't you glad he's the defeated foe today? Aren't you glad he is the adversary that is under our feet as the Bible so declares? So here it says their plot became known to Saul. God will show. He will make known. He will reveal those things in ways that will be out to destroy you. And it said those people watched the gates day and night to kill him. So what happened? The disciples took Saul by night, led him down through a wall, led him down through the wall in a large basket. When Saul got to Jerusalem, the place he had left from, he is still known as Saul, the one that's author that had the authority to bind the Christians and to imprison them and even to kill them if necessary. Because even Paul later calls himself a murderer that he was delivered from and saved by the grace of God. But here it says in verse 26 of Acts 9, And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Listen, don't get discouraged as you deliver your heart and obey the walk and the voice of the Lord, there'll be those that are not believing that you have made that change in your life. They're going to be watching for all those other missteps that you would, but you stay focused. You stay on journey. God is using what we would feel would be unusable. He will show if you will continue to prove yourself to him. I've heard one say in times past, oh, I need to prove myself to my companion or I need to prove myself to my friends or I need to prove myself to these others. I've said it a many a time and I'll say it again this morning. You don't need to prove yourself to anyone except him. If you stay in that place of proving yourself to the Lord, you will eventually be proving yourself. I speak to those that have broken trust in their marriage relationships or broken trust in many different areas. 
But the only way you can renew that trust and rebuild that trust is proving yourself to the Lord. In other words, when no one else is around, you are still being proven to the Lord that you're going to live your life. You don't just try when you're around an individual to prove them that you've changed. If you really have made changes that are pleasing to the Lord, then those changes are going to take place when nobody even is, is even around to see those changes. And I can assure you, if you will serve him and you are serving him when no one's around to see the changes, they will. Those unexpected times when you don't even know someone is seeing you, they'll see that change in your life because you're not trying to prove anything to them. You're just trying to stay faithful to the Lord. And he will make that way for you. Powerful, powerful message today through the Holy Ghost that is in this place that is impacting us. He's wanting to line things up today so you can have this strength and guidance and direction and this freedom in your life. See, Saul's journey wasn't that easy. The way that God planted a seed, you have to go all the way back, not just Acts chapter 9, you have to go back to Acts chapter 6. And you will see that there was one by the name of Stephen that was full of power and full of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed of God. And God was using him as he was chosen with six others, being the seventh, to help and to assist as the church was growing from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit from the day of Pentecost there from Acts chapter 2 through Acts chapter 6. The church was growing daily, such as should be saved, the Bible said. And to the point that the apostles needed more help to minister to the needs of the crowds that were growing. Revival that seemed to be releasing into hearts and lives. And so Stephen was one, and as God was using him, there was such a powerful message that the Lord used him into chapter 6 of Acts that to the point that there was ones that took his message in such a sense that it wasn't delivering them. It was where they turned and they even brought him on charges that were falsely accused of him. They were under false accusations. Oh, I sense your presence today, God. And I'm here to tell you that the Lord today, as he used Stephen and as Stephen was being brought to the place, it said that they got him physically and they bodily removed him from the synagogue, carried him out, and they picked up stones and as they took off their cloaks to stone Stephen. They laid their covers, the men that was doing it, their their robes or their, their outer garments, they laid them at the feet of one by the name of Saul. And that's where the journey of Saul is recognized in the Scripture, there in Acts chapter 6. And following from 6 into 7, Saul, it starts telling us that he began to speak in ones, in very powerful ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Because all of a sudden, you begin to see these things happening. Acts chapter 7, you've got Stephen that is ministering and sharing so many things. But church, at the end of chapter 7, it's 6 and 7, those two chapters, where it brings out where Saul is now in the picture but then you get to Acts chapter 8 and it says, Now Saul was considering to his death. In other words, he said, Even if it kills me, I'm going to do this. Now he wasn't doing this for the Lord at the time. He was consenting to his death, saying, I'm going to give my life if necessary. But his consention was that at the time a great persecution rose against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And the devout men carried Stephen's body to his burial, made great lamentation over him. But look at this, verse 3 of Acts 8. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering 
every house, dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. But if we had time to give you the rest of chapter 8, you would see how God was still moving and just miracles happening through the Christians about what the church was doing. But then you get into Acts 9 where we started this message off and you see it says Saul was still breathing threats in verse 1 and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way that's interesting John 14 6 right Jesus said I am the way the truth the life no man cometh to the father but by me let me tell you, Jesus is still the only way today. And so I'm bringing this to you that Paul, I'm sure, before ones knew him as Paul the Apostle, that, but they knew him more of Saul, the murderer. I guarantee with the scriptures here that they were looking at, that they didn't see that there was any way he could be used for Jesus Christ. But yet, what seemed impossible for us to sense, to see, and believe is all things are possible for God, right? So here it is. Here's the closing part of this message. The Lord is able to use your unusable. He used Saul's unusable, and he became known as Paul the Apostle. And so whatever you feel that you have in your life, when you see God's word, when you see it directed in your life, and you feel that conviction, you feel that impact in your heart, and you know that there is an alignment from his word that needs to happen in your life, and it's going to cause some major, major changes in your life, in your choices, even in your foundational, in the things that you had thought you would line the rest of your life up. But if you were going to line your life up with the Lord, it, those things have got to be changed. Those things cannot be lined with the Scripture if it's already out of line with it. You just don't, you just don't say, oh, well, God understands. Oh, well, He, he will overlook this. Oh, He will... He will not because he said, I change not. The word says, if you take away from this or if you add to this, then all the plagues that was upon this will be upon you. That's in Revelation, the last chapter of the Bible that it highlights. I believe today that the Lord is speaking because he is ready to use what we would think is the unusable areas of our life. So he has anointed you and raising you up and making those changes in your life. So let them align, be faithful, and God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Oh, to God be the glory today. It is worth those changes. It is worth the transformations. I want to close out of Romans 12 and 2, but it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We do not conform to this world. We don't bring God into our alignment. He is calling us and choosing us to line up in Him and for our alignment to be in line with Him. So may God bless you today. May God strengthen you today. May God anoint you today. And may God, as you are faithful to Him, I am here to tell you, He is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Even though those, as you make these alignments, you may have a lot of areas of people forsaken. Saul did. But I got a news for you. You can read through the word of the Lord. Paul started bringing it up when he said, I die daily. When he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He started putting things in the perspective that brought glory to the Lord. And the Lord made a way out of every crisis, out of every thing that come along his way. And God has no respecter of person, church. 
And since God has no respect to a person, he's ready to open up the windows of heaven. He's ready to part your seas. He's ready to exalt your valleys. He's ready to bring down your mountains. He's ready to make the rough places plain. He is ready to make them straight. So today be blessed and be glorified through the name of the Lord Jesus. Now God be with everyone. Strengthen them, guide them, direct them. Let them know that you are not Lord of some, but Lord of all. And Lord, we're giving you praise right now that you are truly making a way where there seems to be no way. Now be with them, Lord, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. And Lord, if they don't know you as Savior, let them right this very moment just confess their sins. Let them, as they believe you died and was buried and rose again, that they are set free right now. And that transformation has immediately taken place in their heart and life. And we give you glory and we give you praise for it all. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. God bless you. Today is... Amen.